Hello, and welcome once again to our show, Lead Me Home. I am Mary Beth Maestri, and I say quite often, God meets us where we're at, but loves us much too much to leave us there. And so is the case with my next guest, Mr. Baldemar Andrada. And Mr. Baldemar, when I first started interviewing him, said, you know, I come from a dysfunctional family. And I laughed at him and I said, no, all of us come from dysfunctional families. The only perfect family is Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. So as we go on now, we'll hear his story and see where his dysfunction led him, because God has a way of working with that also. So let me now welcome you, welcome uh, my guest, welcome to you, my guest, Mr. Valdemar Andrade. Well, Mr. Verde, uh -huh. thank you, first of all, for being here okay. with us. And I'd like you to start off by sort of telling us your background history, your, you know, where you were born, mm -hmm. family, parents, school, your faith, anything that will give, give us a bit of history of you. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, sure. Well, I was born in Corzal Tong, mm -hmm. 20th of March, 1946, in a very poor setting because actually my mother had just left my father. They, finally they had a quarrel. He was he used to drink and he wanted to beat her up and my mother wouldn't take it. And my mother branded him with an iron and she crossed the board. At that time it was not like this. We had taxis and so she probably walked. She walked. Huh? She probably walked, right? I don't know what part of Chetomal they were, but then we crossed the border and that day I was born in in, in the, what we call the Bacadilla in Corozal, I was born there and my mother has always dragged me along with her because I was her baby and she took care of me, you know, very, the way they knew how to take That's care true, of people sure. and she, she used to work for about dollar a week. Mm -hmm. She used to wash for people, like they had this guy in a bus and they used to pay him a dollar and with that she used to make ends meet. But what I remember with my mother is she kept moving. She kept moving from house to house. And some spot we were this, one spot we were here, and the Corozal wasn't like what you see now. Mm -hmm. Corozal was different. There was a lot of touch houses. And then I remember one time we went into a, a place that was quite deserted. And I remember my mother going to this poor old woman. And she had nobody with her, and she used to take care of this old woman. And then she said, and she took this two big copper, because there was this one sense, this yes, big, big put it over their eyes and said, this is the way you put her to sleep. And what, what I always remember about that story is that when this lady died, she died alone. Mm -hmm. If my mother wasn't there, she would, have no she idea. probably was there, there at the rut, but my mother took care of her. How she did it, I don't know. Mm -hmm. And the, the story continues is that then from there, I, I started and my mother was, I remember my, my, one of my stepfathers, I had, I remember two of them, I don't remember if they're anymore, but <laughs> one thing, one of my stepfathers, and the problem is one of them is that, this, you know, these people are machismo, and he wanted to, for me to chop some grass, because he used to work for the city council, mm -hmm. and then he used to have these little machines, and at the time we don't have files like what we have, you know, and I used to cut, and my hands are very soft, because I, for some reason or other, I was given very small hands, and soft hands, <laughs> and... God had uh -huh. something else in Yes, plan. and it was all blistered up, and he insisted that I do it. And my mother said, no, he cannot do it. And he says, well, I, I'll beat him up, and I'll beat you too. Well, that was a big mistake. Because uh -huh. when my mother had that machine, if he ever <laughs> ducked, he was, and immediately my mother would take her, her little box, her little milk box, that was her valise. Mm -hmm. And she would say, son, we are moving, we are gone. And and again. We are gone. Mm -hmm. Then the next time I remember, my, my other and, and stepfather was a, was a much better because he was older mm -hmm. and he was a carpenter and, and I remember this Christmas he made a turtle for me and oh, nice. you know that time we never had any toys like what this guy and so when you haul it the turtle used to come in and out oh, nice. it was quite yes. ingenious you know uh -huh. and he used to take care of us and I remember I ended up in Estrella they were building this this factory and I used to remember that we used to go in this truck to from San Joaquin, the guy was going at San Joaquin school then. Uh -huh. And they used to truck us from Australia because they were building huts for the people that were going to take in the factory. And remember, we used to fishing and everything. And after that, 
I remember my mother coming back to Corozal. I don't remember. I don't know what, what happened, happened to, to my stepfather. Step he just disappeared. <laughs> and then I remember a morning on Christmas morning, and I just remember at five years old. You know, you you believe in Santa Claus. This is like no nobody believes in nothing. So what he did, what I did, I came searching, and my mother said, "What are you searching for?" I said, "I'm searching for my gun because I wanted a little rifle. It's only about a dollar." Mm -hmm. And my mother said, well, I'm sorry to tell you, son, because my mother was very blunt. She, 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 it's not like people, they buttress you, they, they come direct to the thing. And that's one of the things that I think my mother taught me. I have that same attitude. Yeah, I uh -huh. don't beat around the bush. Okay. I just, and some people don't like it because they don't like to be told <laughs> right. the truth. And he said, I, mean, I didn't get paid, so I couldn't buy it. He said, but tomorrow when they... When they pay. When the guys open, I'm going to buy you one, and that's it. But at that time, you don't throw tantrums. Mm -hmm. These oh, people no. didn't, didn't tolerate this human rights business we have now. And another time, I remember my mother used to take me to, to the grocery. Well, my mother, being poor, being <laughs> what she was, she used to take credit. And mm -hmm. when she can pay her bills, she pays her bills. And when she can't pay, she, she can't pay her bills. Yeah. So I remember one time, every time she took me to the, to this thing, she used to buy a, I always forget this, she used to buy a ginger Fanta. Uh -huh. uh huh. For me, it was only about ten cents, and a cracker jack was ten cents. Oh, yes. So I look forward to that time because being, you know, being poor and it's a that treat. That was a treat. Yeah. Yes. So when I treat. told my mother, I said, "What happened to my cracker jack?" And she says, "There's no money for that. Mm -hmm. I haven't paid all my bills, so I can't get it." And I decided to, well, do what kids do, ball my heart out, and that was a big mistake. I shouldn't uh -oh. have done that. So there. Can... Then another thing I remember, my mother she used to wash an iron, and I used to have to take this close mm -hmm. to my to the people right and oh, I used, and she used to collect but I used to take it but I had a bad habit I used to like to play marbles I was very good <laughs> and I, I used to play marbles and I used to sell these marbles marbles so I could go to Martini for five cents because right. it was five so, cents so I was a hustler did. from there I, I was <laughs> learning Street so one day yes so I used to take her clothes and put it on the grass oh and go and play marbles and apparently um a neighbor site and these neighbors were different. They, that time they took care of you, but yes. in the right way. Uh -huh. They disciplined you and I went to tell my mother. My mother didn't tell me anything. She followed me. So I didn't know she was behind me and I was used to put on her clothes. Uh, here I go, I take out my little socks with all my marbles and to play when I spill. They went <laughs> blam! So this is what you do and I run. And I got into the choro because I had a choro. It says, if you run, it's going to be much different. And believe me, when these people is going to be mad, you don't want to run. And I stayed in the choro and I refused to get out. But I had to get out, I had to go home. What's that? What is a choro? A choro is, 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 is if you go into Corozal, they have these waterways that goes to the sea. Oh, uh, okay. Little creeks, we call them choros. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And then they had, they had one, that was, it was beautiful, they had fish and everything. At that time it was clean, clean it's not like sure. now. And yeah. I used to run because I used to live where they, they, they what you call the, they used to the slaughter house. I used to live right over, so the chores used to run there. Yes, I right? So I, I, I grew around water and I used to swim every morning and every evening. Mm -hmm. I go into the sea and I remember this clear, I remember clear that my mother got sick. But I don't know what sick, and I didn't know she was going to have a baby. Mm -hmm. And she went and because she was 42 years old and she, she was suffering from malnutrition. I mean, imagine somebody dies imagine. from childhood because she, she, she never had enough food. Putin. And why didn't this woman have enough food? Because when I used to pass, she knew I never had food. She used to pass the food through the window because you only see your heart through a screen. Right? This is at the hospital. At the hospital. Oh, right, in the hospital. Right where the park is, the hospital was there. Uh -huh. In front of the, the, the church is that side. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and I used to go there because I used to go to school at as, St. As Francis Xavier. Mm -hmm. And I remember that she used to give me this food. This, uh, this bread with the, what we call margarine, we used to call it butter, and, and that's it. And you eat it like that, and she couldn't pass the tea, but the bread could pass, you see. So the food uh, they were feeding her, her she was giving she to was me, passing it because she knew I never had something to eat. eat. You see, and wow. we, 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 we went through all this hardship, we had, but somehow it taught me how to be tough and rough. Mm -hmm. And I think God was seasoning me was for the for the, the, the rest was. of the of exactly. my journey, and then they then came the hurricane. Okay, before we uh -huh. go there, you t you told me she also worked for a hacienda when before you were before even I born. was born. Tell uh, us that story. Well, and apparently he he went with this and uh, this this Ramirez family owned in what you call in in Louisville, 
and apparently she was working beyond my season and she got involved with my father and my brother's family and she got pregnant. But being she was a mestizo, she could never marry the... the this the, is the, the boss's son. No, but he was the, he was a heredero. He was the one who was going to inherit it. Inherit it all. Inherit. So they were, you know, they were... You see, we had this, this class, class system. Class differences, sure. It was a sure. class system. For the, from and then uh-huh. my mother, well, you know, she had my son, but apparently it looked like the, the man decided to... He, she, could, he, she he never had a son, so he decided to make a deal with my mother, and he went to his father. So I knew I had a brother. When wait, wait, but she, but she didn't tell you at no, first. No, she huh? never did tell me that. Mm-hmm. She, I just knew that I thought I was the only one. What? But then afterwards, I I met my brother. But he was seventeen, and I was seven years old. Seven years uh, old. One year later, she died, and then that's when I went to live with my my with my aunt because uh-huh. she wanted me to live with my aunt. The reason why she didn't give me to my grandmother was mm-hmm. so simple reason is that. My grandmother was very poor, and my grandmother couldn't feed me, so mm-hmm. we had the same problem. And then I went to live with my aunt, and my aunt raised me like her son. And mm-hmm. my, my, I also remember my uncle, and my uncle was a very tough guy. Uh-huh. Well, he said that, and remember, he says, you don't run away from a fight. Anybody okay. pick something, you fight. If you don't fight, I'm going to beat you. Oh my goodness! So yes. you know, this, this is the uh, way yes, they raised me. The way they and I remember sure. we used to and we used to fight. And my cousin and my because we were the same, almost the same age. Uh-huh. I think he's about one year younger, younger than me. Uh-huh. And we used to fight a lot. So what he did, he made a boxing ring and he got a <laughs> pair of boxing gloves. And his rule was this: if you win, you're going to get lashing, and if you lose, you're going to get lashing. So oh you better win. So it's, it's a it's a double whammy. Uh-huh. And that's the way he cured us from. From fighting, from other fighters. because then we will not fight because it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> See, this, this, this is well, what that was a good form of discipline. Exactly. Yes. But, but remember, this guy didn't go to school. You know, yeah. mm-hmm. he was a mechanic. He used to go to to, to these mechanic shops mm-hmm. instead of going to school. But he was a very darn good mechanic. Yeah. He could look at a hear an engine and tell you exactly what, what was wrong. Mm-hmm. And he used to be very good. So he used to buy these old cars, these old and I call them war tanks. It's mm-hmm. not like this stuff that they have. <laughs> In fact, a guy had one, Miss Miranda. He ran into one of them in Castillo truck and he just smashed up the truck because these things were like armor yes, plated. Yes, they were tough. Uh-huh. And they used to change them every year. And the reason why he sent us to school because he couldn't read. And so I, he wanted you all to, to read, the, read, read because the when the cars changed, we had to read it, read it, read it, and he gets it in his head. Can you imagine? Uh-huh. And then he used to go to Chetumal and he used to bring things and carry people. And the, we, we were, then I went from one thing to being wealthy because they, he was wealthy. We had the only radio. I remember they used to have these novellas and that time we never had no radio beliefs. I remember, I always remember this, this advertisement. See, advertisement worked. They used to say, A D O C. El sabato que viste y resiste, da la hora. This is a doc, a doc's shoes. Oh and I was, but goodness. we couldn't sit down and listen. And I remember this famous, very famous in Corozal, El Derecho de Nacer. They made, they made a movie of it, uh, El Derecho de Nacer. And we, I remember all these things. And I remember when they, the ladies used to come, we had to go and play in the yard. Well, we used to come play in it till 9, 10, and we come in. And uh-huh. if you get into your bed without your bed, you're going to because we didn't like to be there because you know we are kids. <laughs> Typical boy. Uh, no, we never had water. You yes, see, that's uh, the right. water was very hard. Uh-huh. They had very hard water. So you so if you used to be soap powder. That's what we used to use oh as soap powder. That time yes. we had a famous fab. We call yes, it fab. Yes, yes. And then the, whenever you got to be there, they, they give you and you got well water uh-huh. and you have to and we used to carry water. We used to, because they, they, they were putting the water system, but they were, it's very it's very alkaline. That that water is very heavy. So they used to, for example, use our baths where you drink water, and you know you drink that water. Oh, yes, yeah. that, that, so you used yes. to have to buy water. They used to sell you a, 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 a bucket of water. These, these, these metal things used to come. I used to go to the people that have it said, can you sell me a bucket of water? <laughs> and I always remember these things. And, and then I remember that when this hurricane struck. Okay, so let, this is going to be, uh, I'll call this part a uh, pivotal okay, point. Yeah. Hurricane Janet yeah. huh? comes. Go ahead and tell, tell yeah, that story. The hurricane was announced and my uncle said, well, the hurricane is coming. And he, he, apparently he knew about hurricanes and sure. he put us in the bathroom mm-hmm. because that's the safest place. Mm-hmm. But we were in this house and this house just kept rocking and all of a sudden we hear the veranda is gone, we hear the steps are gone and only the shell of the house. And my aunt used to suffer from fears of a very bad heart and they used to use this, this, this and and for water that they used to wet them with and that's what they used to bring them. I had to go 
and I used to walk me probably about 20 feet, 15 feet. And when I came back, at the same time the house fell. But we had some cars and it fell and they had a vat and this vat had a lot of zincs. And if my, my, I still remember my, 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 my cousin, because I had two girl cousins and two boy cousins, but my, but the, the boy wasn't there with us because he already married. So we grew with the, with my two girls and the boy. And she hold him at my foot. And we had this lamp. If I not, mean, you would have gone. Right into the vat where all the zinc were there. Started. You only heard the zinc goes out. Zoop! Zoop! You know, it, it, it was a frightening experience. Oh, I could have, sure, I could know? imagine. I mean, and you know, I, I was only about, at that time, I was about 10, 11. Mm -hmm. About 10, I was 10 years old. Because it was 1955, I was born in 46, I was nine, nine years old when that hit. And so right up. You yeah. had a lamp, you said? Yeah, you and I had this lamp. Mm -hmm. And it kept falling down and it wouldn't out, right? But this, this was amazing because it's, it's sink. And then my, my uncle says, God is with us, we have to pray. And I never forgot that over my uncle because my uncle wasn't a religious person. He never went to, to Mass, but we had to go to Mass. Yeah, yeah. Because he said, you go to school, they have the rules, you obey the rules. Uh -huh. They are different. I mean, you, know, oh, you don't go to mass. I don't go to mass. But yes. that, that. So we always we, we had that faith. Mm -hmm. the, the the people were baptized. They were Catholics. Most of you them. You had a good Catholic belief. Yes, like you, uh, you called uh, it a good. Uh, belief. It was a different belief. Uh -huh. It was but different than us. Yeah, and uh, they insisted that you go to sure. uh, because if you go to the school, you had to go to mass every Sunday. Okay. That was a part of your education. So just let's we soon have to wrap up now. Yeah. So how do you leave Corazol to come to Belize? Well, when the hurricane came, up, my my brother came for me. The same brother. Uh, that my had, brother, uh -huh. yes, and I I got here, but I was in Standard Four because but because the 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 the, the school system was different. Belize had a one year ahead, so they usually drop you one. Okay. So when I came, I was in Standard Four. I had to repeat Standard Four. You see, so that's the reason why when I get out, I was 14 years old. Okay. But I did very well in the... In but, and, but you're living with your brother and uh, his wife. And his wife. So uh, you're living with, with that family. Yeah. And they, they, you're going to school. Yeah, going okay. to school at then Holy Dima. Dima. Uh -huh. And um, at, at, so are you going to stay? Is he going to be... A, what's going to happen to him? And well, his, he's, his, he's going to work in a bar and the worst thing you can do in an alcohol is put him... And you, you can't put a thief to mine <laughs> mind the bank, right? <laughs> so, and you put on somebody that has a drinking problem. So he had a drink. So what happened, and you know, his, his father, this was his father's bar and his uncle's bar. And then this was one of the most famous bars in Belize. Everybody used to go and drink there. Mm -hmm. And they used to, then from there, he started falling off, falling off, falling off. And eventually, and the alcoholic, because I remember he used to chase us out of the house. When he came in, uh, Because at that time, my poor sister and I already had two kids. Mm -hmm. Because she had five kids. She had five, four girls and one boy, right? And then, but they were like my family. That's the family that... You were being uh, raised by them By now. them, right? Uh -huh. I got the Bradleys on Daly Street. Uh -huh. Leo Bradley and, and <laughs> Bernie, Bern Bernadette Bradley, Miss Emerita Bradley, mm -hmm. and her daughters. And we lived in the same yard. But they were, very, they were a very Catholic family. In fuck it was different again. These Catholics used to go to Mass, they, they, mm -hmm. that's like us. Uh -huh. Okay, let's stop there. We're going to okay. take a break. Okay, sure. And then, but, but we're seeing already how you're turning into this street, mart, street yeah, smart right. person. <laughs> huh? So we'll take a break and okay, we'll be right okay, back. Good. We'll be right back, viewers. Mm -hmm. Be right back. I worked in pro baseball for a long time, and we play on Sundays. And it was an easy excuse. Uh, I took the easy out and just didn't go to Mass. Got caught up on that whole selfishness, that whole, you know, um, I can do it all. The times when I was struggling were the times I needed God the most. And now that uh, I've come back and accepted God, my world has completely changed. If you've been away from the Catholic Church for any reason, visit catholicscomehome.org today. Welcome back, viewers. So let's continue on this journey of Baldemar's. And you can see so far what, you know, we can understand what he means by dysfunctional, but you can see God there all the time too. He never gives up on mass. Through the school he goes to, through the family, he meets the families he lives with. Mass is still a part of his life. He has this Catholic belief. 
that was very strong back then, even if you weren't practicing all of it. So let's continue on Balimar's story. And you see now he's completed standard six and he's going to go out into the workforce. Huh? Mm -hmm. And of course, like we said, he's getting to be very street smart. Yeah. So let's take you through your job. Some of the, not all of them because you went through yeah. several, yeah. but you started off, let's begin at, at 14. You're helping your, um, my, your sister-in-law. Sister -in right? Okay. You want to start there? Uh -huh, go ahead right. with those jobs. Well, after my brother left the home and my sister in law where she has she, has, she has, already has her her load because she has a lot of kids. Uh -huh. And then she 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 was an, uh, she was she wasn't educated but then she went to standard six and so on. She uh, again she was quite a hustler because she used to make on Christmas time she used to raffle and see you know, turkeys and mug sets and whatnot. Uh -huh. And so what happens now, she, she gets a contract with Palace Hotel to wash some sheets. So we decided that between the two of us, I'm going to be the carrier, she's going to be the washer. <laughs> so every morning I would go at nine o'clock, right? Because I'm not, uh, I am working, but I, at that time I wasn't working, so I used to do this. This is what's where, and I used to go there. And then we bring the, the sheets and the 60 pillowcases and 30 sheets, and she used to collect for it. And she used to be, do very well. And we used to but afterwards... Would she give you a little bit or that was just your help with your food and board? No, she, 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 she used to uh, give me a, a help. We used to help one another. another with that, sure. But then afterwards, I, 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 before that, I, ha I got that job at Central Drug Store. Mm -hmm. And it was a $5 a week. And I used to work from Monday to Saturday. And we used to work... $5 a week. So that would be Monday to Saturday. Monday to so Saturday. So less than $1 a day. That's right. Less than a dollar. And then when a I used day. to take you, it you home, you hear that viewers back then, huh? Yeah, That's I used to, I used to, and uh, give um, home four fifty, and I get for fifty cents. Oh my goodness! And uh -huh. then, but when then I said this money is too, is too, too little, little. So I, uh -huh. I started, you know, okay. being uh, well. Like, that's why I think where I live where I live because I, I can relate to the people to be host as what they do. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I never condemn people what they do because sure. sometimes circumstances are the cases. Yeah. Uh -huh. So then afterwards. And I remember that then I decided that then that time hurricane then Hati, another hurricane is going to turn the whole tide again. So what happened is that I remember and I I was working at then I had already changed my job. I went to Guy and FNR for eighth party a week. I got okay, a so big you raise. moved up. That's I got a, that's a big party, raise, right? Uh -huh. So what happened now, oh, Mr. Bradley? He was the, like Nemo. He was in charge of oh, that, and, uh -huh. and so we didn't have to go to shelters. Oh, yes. He opened the um, children's library for us, and mm -hmm. all his family was there. And I remember this, this incident. What happened is that I remember, in fact, I remember the song that he was playing. Yeah, they had in sad movies, and my boy <laughs> yes. lollipop, and I. Re that's the last yes, song. So that time it was it wasn't radio, but it was BHBS, <laughs> and this was about nine in the night, and this wind just came, and this water just came. But again, my brother was coming in and on. He was there with him as usual. They were, they were drinking yes. and, you know, and I, ha I had to go and get the, the baby's food. That time, no, yeah, she had already, she had two kids. She had three, four, I think three kids No, mm -hmm. And they were all small. And I, I, I remember going and this water nearly take me. And uh, somehow my, my brother managed to catch me because it was, it was yes. in a swirl. Mm -hmm. And the water just rose in, in seconds, okay. it was. Okay. And then when we got up, the lease was in a mess. Mm -hmm. The lease was finished. And I remember this clearly going to, because I was working at Nard, and I knew that they had a lot of food behind there. So the, 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 the water had broken the lock, but it was open like this. Mm -hmm. So I opened the warehouse and I started taking things out. So you're, you're like around 15 years old Yes, 15, old exactly time. 15. Uh -huh. Because it, it was the 31st of, of October. Yeah, 1966. it was Halloween, Halloween yes, day. Yes, uh -huh. And I remember this 1960. thing. 1960. Yeah, 1960. 61. 61. 61. 61. And I remember all these lots and we're bringing food. So Mr. Bradley says, the, the police are going to take you. I say, well, you are eating it, right? You are hungry. <laughs> it's going to take all of to us. Eat, right? <laughs> So they, that time the British took over the, yes. the six the government because they put me a price to clean drains. Mm -hmm. Says I'm the, I said you were the prime minister. I remember that thing by 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 um, Saint Mary's School, mm -hmm. 
and I was coming with this with this <laughs> this 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 this, uh, and this pan that I picked up, right? Oh, food. And, uh, and food, but on top I had I don't know what made me put in uh, a pack of uh, like bandage uh-huh. uh, bandages, right? And the, the army guys were stopping and saying, Oh, you work for the Red Cross, so I crossed the line. <laughs> so then I, with you. Yeah, you see, so then I said, Oh, so this is how it works. So I, with, I started, and this is when I fell on, and I remember Mr. Nolan Bradley, I used to take him along, he was small, and I, I said, We are going into the rice meal, they have rice, so we're going to get rice, rice. there. So I, because I, I, I used to work on the streets, I used to so be a messenger, know area, I know sure. the areas. Uh-huh. And then I, I went to, and that time the, the BDF was on and where they have oh, up by Fort. Uh huh, right Fort, there. Sure. And then and I said they're going to give us food in here. Let's get into the line. So I, we got into the line and we got a little cup of tea like that and we got a little bread like that and a sausage. And everybody said, this is not food, you know, people eat a lot. But apparently they had something in it and they used folio. Wow. And then I went to Santiago Castillo and we got flour. Mm-hmm. Then I remember going to Sim shop and he had pack bread. He had this little bread, this little bread. That I never had pack bread. Uh-huh. And he had a, and it was dry and I just take it. And I just kept bringing food. And right after the hurricane, I remember that then I started to work with the, they, they were recruiting people and I went to the hospital and I was working. And I remember this incident clearly, clearly. One of the Creole guys said, don't clean so much. He said, they want to put it in water. I said, but this is Belize, this is ours, we should clean it. I didn't know the soldier was watching. Mm-hmm. So now when the line comes, I was, I was, just, and they were big and they, they went to the line and the soldier was way to the back. So the soldier says, come to the front and they start reeling up. He says, no, he said, he worked, you didn't work. He said, he oh. will, he will eat. I never forget that about that Englishman. And, and the, 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 the discipline of these, these English soldiers, because sure. they put us on a they curfew. Had, yes. They yes, put us on we a curfew. Around. Well, that time we were still working on a NARD, and then after the NARD got settled down and everything, I ended up at Phillips. Okay, you moved uh-huh. on to Phillips. Mm-hmm. So at Phillips, it was nice because... You said Phillips was at the petroleum company. Yes, they, they were drilling in, in Mango Creek. Okay. And I, I, was the, I was the office messenger. Mm-hmm. But then afterwards, they promoted me to a radio, uh, a, a radio operator. They taught me how to, uh, to, to uh, these operators, and mm-hmm. they were paying very good money, but you had to work night sure. and they had this guy that used to drink and sometimes he used to his turn he used to come five o'clock he was supposed to leave me 12 so he used to give me his hours so i used to make a lot of <laughs> so money you made extra time yes I, time. I made a lot of money i mean mm-hmm. because this was good money i i actually saved i remember about almost 800 dollars mm-hmm. and i decided well i have 800 dollars i don't want to work anymore <laughs> <laughs> Big money in yes. that back then. And then afterwards, when the money finished, I end up with I end up now in, at Vogue's. You got okay. Well, Vogue's and uh, Mr. Gag, and we had a little run in Mr. Gag. I always remember I wanted to leave Mr. Gag, and I gave him notice, but I told him I'm going to pay you. I have two weeks holiday notice. He said I'm going to give you one week, and then he said no, you have to give me the whole two weeks. I won't have to. So I went to the to, to the labor. Uh, because I, I knew I knew my way. I was telling I'm a street person. So the guy said, "You shouldn't have done that." He said, "You should have gone on holiday and given notice. Then you don't have to pay him anything." He said, well, "You made an arrangement. You don't need to pay the whole week. You only pay half." So I went to Mr. Gang and I tell Mr. Gang, I said, "I don't have to give you the whole week." This labor says, "Ah, there you are. You always know you and Mr. Noah, <laughs> and you know become Mr. Gang was, you know." Yes. But afterwards, being a good Christian. He decided to pay me all my say I was wrong. I shouldn't have done what I did. And we parted friends and I went to work but the job didn't mature and I ended up at Brian. Okay. But this is Victor Victor. Victor Brian. Mm-hmm. And they wanted a salesman and I remember I was working on the north side and on the south side. Mm-hmm. And this guy on the south side got stabbed. And I was I was promoted to the south side where and I got a raise from twenty dollars a week to twenty five dollars a week. Mm-hmm. And everything was honky door. That's when, you know, you're, you're younger, you start going into the public, start learning to smoke. I, but my, my brother used to smoke and drink, so apparently so I had to So you're going to follow him, of course. So, right. yeah. so what happened now, when I went to Bryant, right, I, um, I developed a good relationship with Mrs. Galate and Mr. Galate. They were very good. And Ms. Mr. Aguilar and Mrs. Aguilar, they were the owners. Mm-hmm. And we and we, I did 16 years with them, uh-huh. and I learned the wholesale business. I know how to. I used to order things for them. I used to go into a catalog because at that time the People's United Party was nationalizing things, and then the, the wholesalers were, you know, against the government because they had this control system. And we started bringing things, and we were doing pretty well. 
But then I decided the money was, I, at that time, Ms., uh, their brother left the job. Something happened and they, they, they got there and they gave me the old district job. That's when okay, I went to so district. Were, so you were traveling uh, now? No, I was traveling, no, really making money because mm -hmm. no, I, was, I, I was making, I used to have what you call and what you have, what, what you call, and they used to have traveling, they used to pay me my traveling. So what we used to do is that if you not to pay tax, you raise your traveling because traveling, you know, pay tax. So my salary only raised a little. So every time I used to tell Ms. God, I said, don't give me the raise, they're giving me my traveling. So my traveling was actually my pay because I always phone to the that. system, right? And you beat the system. So, you know, you have this thing, <laughs> it's ingrained in you. You, you go on the streets, and yeah, you, start, you started yeah, do doing it. things that are, they shouldn't do these okay. things, but we, they did we, it. We got to move on. We got to yeah. move on. Yeah. As interesting as all of this yes. is. Anyway, there I go. I got married. Uh -huh. so when I got just there, I got married. Uh -huh. And then my wife decided, this money is too little. We are going to open a little business. Well, I was working. I, I wanted to work about six months to give the business. Huh? But then my boss said, no, you either close your business or work with me. So I, I went on my own. Okay. So you open up a, a grocery store yeah, but shop. I, yeah, but the problem is that I, I had already borrowed in, in $12,000 to buy my house. Oh, okay. Uh, so uh, no, so no to, I have to really tighten up. Know. Well, the business was good. So she, your, your wife would run the business because she had run a shop yes, previously. Yes, all her life she has been so a business she, person. Okay. But then I took over because uh -huh, of my you, expertise, because sure. I, I knew you wholesale. You had been out on it. On and it, then I sales. really got into the business and I was really, the money was rolling. Mm -hmm. The first day I made $10,000 clear profit and I had my warehouses and my, my whole building. So everything was going good until one morning. I, I used to go to Holy So, yeah, you're still going to Mass now. Yeah. Well, but before we, before we get to that, that's going to be sort of your turning ah. point. But tell me a little bit about your wife. You said, I love it. You said she's a humble woman. Yeah, very humble. And, and took care, help with the business. Yeah. Uh, you had how many children? We had two children. Two children, uh -huh. yeah, a boy and a girl, yeah. who were raised in the faith, yeah. being baptized Yeah, well, everything. You, you never thought about putting your... Another question. No. Yes. In fact, it was different. That uh -huh. time, you go to a Catholic school, you go to a Catholic college. Uh -huh. I mean, that, that, that was it. Okay, so you, you described her. I like a description you, you, you described Well, her. I, 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 I always thought it's like the hook stick that holds the line, right? I was the line and she was the hook it. stick. She because, was the hook stick. Because she just kept encouraging me. Yes, we're going to make it. Don't worry. So, because uh -huh. I used to worry about paying this loan. Sure. You know, and afterwards, well, they didn't give me the break of the six months, but the business picked up and I, uh -huh. I, and I bought these two houses and I used to rent the big one and I, I opened a little something like what the people got in apartments. Mm -hmm. But then I had some guys working at this, they had this, the, some people were in a local person, this fellow Castellanos, and all of them for a banque and I used to rent them. At two dollars a week each, and I had over forty of them staying oh there. Oh my goodness! And I uh -huh. had, but at that time we never had any private bath, uh -huh. but they had private bath, and, and I hired a girl to keep the place clean. Keep it, sure. So you know, forty guys at two dollars, that's eighty dollars a week. Yes, and I was well. really along with my business, we were doing well. Right, but um, along with that, of course, comes the other vices yeah, that but, comes well, with, I used, with the, I, I studied the people of the district. They used to sell liquor in their stores, mm -hmm. and I started doing this here. Mm -hmm. But I never had a license, mm -hmm. and that's you see. Okay, we'll have to. We'll uh, we, we're going to start off because uh -huh. we're going to have to wind down for this section. Uh -huh. But start off, at, which I call your turning point. You were getting ready for mass yes. one day to yes, tell us. We'll start get started. Uh, the, 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 the Sunday morning early, I got up and shaved and went to use the bathroom, and I fell down in the bathroom. I, I had passed out. I had. I had ulcers and I didn't know it, mm -hmm. but due to drinking and bad eating and you know bad diet and everything. And then instead of going to the mass, I ended up in the hospital. That was a Sunday morning, and and they, they didn't know what was wrong with me. So they, they did the test, and the Sunday, I passed the whole Sunday, till in the morning I passed with them. But the Sunday morning, I remember this clearly, some charismatic came, and they prayed over me. And I, I felt this darkness, something black over me. Like, I, I got very light, and a voice kept telling me, if you can stand up and you walk, you're going to make it. But, so if you can stand up and walk, uh, you're going to, you're make, going it. to make it. Because I was losing blood, you see, mm -hmm. and, and I, I, was, I had already lost a lot of blood and everything. I didn't know it. And the matrons, when I get up in the morning, I start walking, and the matron says, you're a very lucky man. They say, we are, we are going to bury you because <laughs> we are already giving up on you. They we didn't know what you had. But well, right after that, this doctor, Estrada Brand, came, and he was the one that diagnosed me. He said, 
you are dealing in, with a case of ulcers. He says, no, but we can't find any traces. He says, yes, you are looking for stomach ulcers. He has geodonal ulcers. Mm -hmm. It's a different kind of ulcers. And he treated me for it. Mm -hmm. And he gave me a, 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 a political asantak. But then I, and I continued with my lifestyle. And Christmas, I vomited blood. And my wife said, well, marry that time. Because mm -hmm. it's only like that. And that time they had, the, I remember the last flight from Chatoma to Merida. That was the last flight I took because they had discontinued that flight. Oh, after, okay. And I ended yeah. up in Merida. Mm -hmm. And I, I made about two trips to Merida. Mm -hmm. The third trip, I, I, my mother-in-law took me because my wife had to stay through the shop and I had to go because I had my business. I was working for myself. And then we met this doctor and this doctor told me, said then, I met this lady and then the lady said, my son-in-law has just come from Spain. He says, I'm going to give you a note. Go to the Red Cross, he's dealing and you're going to get it for free. He said, said the poor, poorer people. Yes, I have the Red Cross. Uh -huh. So he said, you go there and you, you give her my name. He says, my son-in-law, he's going to see you. Because mm -hmm. seeing you are, you are not from here, we are going to pass like a Mexican and he gave her a gun and we went there. And the guy said, he said, we have this medication, but it's very expensive. But he said, very expensive, I said, it couldn't be much more than what I have. But this pills cost $110 for 10 pills. And I had to take three a day up so before 11, every meal. That's $11 a pill. Uh, a pill. Mm -hmm. you no, know, I said, if I take three, three times a day in two and a half days, in two <laughs> days, $110 is gone. So I counted, I said, before I come back, I, I want 30 bottles. So I tell the guy, can I have 30 bottles? And he said, you know how much is that? And when she gave me the bill, but she gave me a bill in pesos. I said, no, I said, give me real money. He said, US. And when she gave me the amount, I never had it. So I only bought about 10, 10 bottles. Mm -hmm. But what was fortunate, my wife, my daughter got married to a guy and he had the same thing. And he started getting for Salvador, so we, we never had to buy. And now that pill, uh -huh. which back then cost $11, uh -huh. now costs anywhere between 50, 50 cents, cents 50 and cents. Some of them, yeah. I know I checked up those, 85 cents yeah. as well. Uh -huh. You could get it for 50 cents because some they have them, the one from places. India. Uh -huh. See? So you can have yeah, it. Yeah, if I can get it from India for free. <laughs> oh my goodness. All right, so let's, let's we, we're moving on now. So we are, you're coming to, to you. At Jehovah Witnesses approach you at your business. Well, huh? they, 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 Jehovah Witnesses have a, a have a have a system mm -hmm. that people don't realize. Then once you let them in, mm -hmm. they are going to want to try to convert, convert you. you. Right. So the guy came and then and I, I said, well, you know, he's talking about God. You know, the first thing you figure like all Christians are Christians. You don't know what what you're meeting. You see, and sometimes I think we, we, we ignorance is our biggest enemy. Mm -hmm. When we don't know. Yeah. So this guy was quite nice. He was dressed up in his necktie and everything. Very, very, very mannerly and everything. But he did one thing that I didn't like. He kept attacking the Catholic Church. Mm -hmm. He says, you Catholics do the same thing. He's born on Christmas. You kill him on Good Friday. You raise, you raise him on Easter. <laughs> and then you, 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 he's born again. That's all you do. So I said, this, this doesn't sound correct. Something is wrong with this. So I never took his work. I, I was going, and these missionaries had just come to take over St. Ignatius, the Columbans. Mm -hmm. And Father Sean was there, and he was a missionary. And what he used to do, he used to go to all these different churches, and he used to see what they do. Uh -huh. So he was, I said, this is, and then he started, he started like, you know, educating us in concerning the faith. And I told him about this guy. He says, I'm going to lend you a book. He says, I just brought it from the States. He said, it's a Catholic answer to the Jehovah Witness. I'm going to get you, I'm going to lend you my book. And what happened? He actually brought a book, copy and gave it. He said, I'm going to give you this. I still have it. I still have the book. And then that's when my journey really started to spark off. Right? And then and Father Roberts came and to a mission in Holy Dima. And he, he had, you know, from Playboy, the Playboy priest. Uh -huh. And then I started following my feet closer and closer and closer. Now, some of that came from also that turning point where you had the Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah but so you, see, you see, I always look it. at feet this way. You see how St. Paul was knocked off his horse? All of us walk, with our horse is pride. Yes. We feel like we know more than God. Mm -hmm. And he also knock you down and then put you up. Back. back up. So what he does, he always does these things to us, to mm -hmm. us. But we, we don't see the, the value of suffering. Mm -hmm. You see, in Catholicism, we teach about suffering, but yes. nobody likes to suffer. No one wants to hear you about see. it. So in, out, out of everything that God does, he has, a, he has a purpose. And if you find the purpose, you're going to work through the purpose. Uh -huh. 
because in 1998 when he destroyed my business he sent me to the prisons to work so because I had a bad idea about the poor class of people, I said they were lazy, this, you know, and uncle. Then I realized what I was Once doing was wrong. There. And that's when the faith started really to grow because I had to deal with this, uh, this, this, this prison. And I couldn't understand the this, this system, why people did these evil things. And I started going to mass daily. You be, okay, from there you began going uh, the, daily, daily mass. mass. That and then yeah. from there to that stage, to this day, I still go to daily mass. Okay, so, so yeah, so you still keep that up. But now, Father Sean, uh, let's, he's the Columbans. Eh? Columbans. So he was, they were at St. Ignatius, uh -huh. and you said they, they, they were uh, very instrumental in building the parish hall. Yeah, everything. Uh, yeah, yeah, they, they, they built the whole place. church, they, yeah. um, I think adding on, helping with the school, different yeah, things. Yeah. Eh? So they're also going to be, um, he said, he's lending you books. Yeah. And they were sort of, he was Vatican II, you yeah, said. Yeah, he, huh? he already Kinda started to implement Vatican II. II in fact, we, are, we haven't, I think we haven't endorsed even, Vatican even II. Even come close. But yeah, what yeah. he was doing, he used to get us a cadre of us, and he built a little chapel with our AC, and he, we used to go get keys and go in there and a door. Yes, Just something uh, like yes, what you have, but uh, in St. Jesus was different. We had to put in a cross idea, and we had this, this 24 hours, you could go there anytime and you sit down there. And he used to, do, he used to get all the people that are, were good, because we had a good, we had a good a nucleus of good Catholics, Paul Rodriguez, you had the Ayuso. You, but these people are old now, mm -hmm. we have not replenished them. That's the thing. And I most of them have enough. moved out and you see, so the parish is, is sponsoring, right? Mm -hmm. But St. Jesus has always been an evangelizing parish. Uh -huh. We have always gotten good priests. When Father Sean moved, then we got Father Noel. Okay, so so Father Sean has been helping you, uh -huh. he's instrumental yeah. in building... I used building to go to conference, he used to send me to conference okay. to represent the church. Because now you need, you, you wanted these questions answered that the Jehovah uh -huh. Witness yeah. were throwing at you. Yes. So he's going to no, be he, instrumental. He loaned me a book about, he loaned me a book about the Jehovah Witness and the Mormons. And, okay. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and he showed, he said, all these sects, he said, they, come, they are made in the United States. And then I learned all about the Baptist, the oh, Methodist, where everything. They came. And they came much, much. They come from the 1500s, where Catholic is from 2000. Yeah, they uh -huh. come way, 1,500 years later, yeah. they come into the yeah. picture. We're from but you see, the then. problem I lies, I, I think the problem with the Catholic Church is they don't teach us about this. They, who founded them, where did they? Where, where, but yes, you see, you know. when then they started to have this charismatic and they start selling books. Mm -hmm. And that's when they opened the bookstore, and then I start buying my books. And you, so you were just um, self, you were learn, teaching yourself. Exactly, all these I started things. buying books about it. In fact, I just read a book that I bought at the, at the there. It's in, in the Catholic Faith Explained Thoroughly mm -hmm. by this canon Francis Ripley. And it tells you the whole thing about your faith. Oh, he he lets no stone on thought. It's a, an amazing book. I don't know why I never read it. Before, uh-huh. I never read it before. I only but used to take up because Father Noel, noticing that I was doing this, he encouraged me and he used to give me, I said, you know, you should teach confirmation. Because nobody likes to teach confirmation. Like I said, confirmation is the unknown uh, sacrament. sacrament. <laughs> no, in fact, some people are not even conformed now, uh -huh. right? Uh -huh. But I, I used to do it, so I, I used to tell the other, the other catechists, I said, why don't you use the Bible? I said, you notice the process? I said, no, you don't need the Bible. We, we have sacraments. Mm -hmm. And th this is, I think, this is how we will lock this. A mistake, yeah. The and two I just, go together, read, I just read it in the catechism by John Paul. He says, he said the Bible and, and the, the, the tradition, same. we need the two. The two. Where did we get lost? I, I don't know. Okay, we'll have to stop yeah, there. Okay, we'll good. have to stop for another break. Viewers, it, it just it just keeps getting more and more exciting yeah. as we follow um, Valdemar on his journey. So we'll be come back for the for our last section, and we'll continue and see where he is now on his fateful journey. Mm -hmm. We'll be right back. I worked in pro baseball for a long time, and we play on Sundays. And it was an easy excuse. Uh, I took the easy out and just didn't go to mass. Got caught up on that whole selfishness, that whole. You know, um, I can do it all. The times when I was struggling were the times I needed God the most. And now that uh, I've come back and accepted God, my world has completely changed. If you've been away from the Catholic Church for any reason, visit catholicscomehome.org today. 
Welcome back. And we'll con continue on this amazing story and all the books that are filling up Valdemar's mind now as he's in searching for truth. He comes to understand that he, he has to, to learn more about his faith so that he can share it with others. So he's already had Father Sean lending him books so that he's be able to, to talk to the Jehovah Witness and, and fight for his faith. But he's also going to meet other priests along the way. So you said after Father Sean, um, but you're going to meet up with Father Noel Leslie, right. of course. But also you helped out Father Cayetano. That's right. Tell Father us a little bit more about that. Uh, actually, after Father Noel left, he went to Holy Dima, oh, but okay. and Father Larry took over, Bishop Larry now, and he took in this priest that was and physically challenged, he couldn't see very but good. Blind, uh -huh. And then I, for so some reason or the other, I, I started, oh, he needed to, he was going to do that same thing, visiting the sick. Nobody was visiting the sick in sick. the parish. Okay. So he got his fellow Eric Neal, and I started going because I used to take him in, because I used to put him here and then... He, he would walk along yeah, with he his, put his hand, hand on here, your and shoulder. Then, huh? And then I would read the things, like for example, read read the thing and he would, and, and, and then I would read the gospel and he would do a little homily when we were there and he used to give the, the communion. Mm -hmm. And what happened is that, and we had a little problem with Eric because Eric was very political and when he had to pray, he didn't want to take us out. So he said that, I can't go, I said, well, I don't need you. But I said, no, the only way I could do it is to become an extraordinary of the Eucharist. So now the, the, the journey starts that I started every other Sunday or whenever he has a funeral, or anyway, Father Callistos calls me, and I have to go on half an hour ahead and read the prayer fast, everything. Everything and, to and, prepare and, uh, yourself. Pre 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 no, it prepare him. Uh -huh. So get what there, and then... You would read uh -huh, it to him. Uh -huh. Then when he gets on the altar, I read the whole Mass. I actually said the whole Mass, but in his ears, and uh -huh. he just keep repeating. And then Father, Father Larry had given us permission to read the Gospel, but he wouldn't allow us to read the Gospel because he wanted to read it himself. Uh -huh because he used to the preaching. Then I found out that sometimes the masses are crowded and they have nobody to help him. I said, but I have to become an extra So I started finding, and bam, I, Father Noel started the, the program in Holy Dima. To become. Uh, to become, and uh, no, he was taking in, and uh -huh. he was Musa came and said, I am, I'm, I am I'm like that. I said, but I never see you do anything, because I never see you go. He said, because sometimes the bishop no one help him, because mm -hmm. the bishop is like that. So I, we started working and everything, and I started going to Olinia because I have a very close relationship with Father Noel. For some reason or the other, I'm very close to him. He was my confessor when I was in, 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 at, at St. Ignatius because every Saturday he would come about half an hour ahead of the Mass and I would go to confession. Uh -huh. I used to tell Father Noel, I said, you mean they don't have any sinners in this thing? I'm the only sinner. You're the only one going no, to confession. No, but Father Noel was a very, very nice person. When you get to still really is. know him, uh -huh. He guides you. He, sure. he, 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 and then, so at Holy Dima, he, 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 I used to help him at the altar. And then I became an extraordinary minister of the Eucharist. But he never finished us. What happened is, Father Jordan took over, and then I got commissioned the first time. And that's when I, I took over that whole ministry from Father Kalisos. So, so this was like a, a two two year program. Uh, uh, actually, actually, it was about two years. A yeah? two year program, two and year then you become commissioned, commissioned by the bishop. Uh, I have been commissioned two times. Oh, okay. We should be commissioned every two years. But, every two years, all but right, I think yeah. the the bishop is going to start a program now mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to get new ones because the 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 all the parishes need need of course. So yeah. everybody is because old. because um. What you just explain with that with that position? You're helping the priest exactly, uh, uh, and which is what to distribute communion. What you, else? You distribute communion. You help him with the the body and blood because mm -hmm. the, so certain parishes give body and blood. Uh -huh. And what you do is the priest should the, during the immers on the mass in the villages mm -hmm. and the extra do the the, the, the the Eucharist. They they do a communion service. They, they can do a, a communion priest. service if no. the priest isn't no. there. No, huh? they do it. Yeah, they have they, to. in all these villages. Yeah, because these, there is. No. Yeah. Uh -huh. So what happened in Holy Dima after Father Smas left? We 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 had Father Jordan. We had Father Father, Father Larry at that time. Uh -huh. But then they moved Jordan and Father Larry stayed by himself. But they had Bishop Clancy, so we, we were doing. But sometimes Bishop Clancy had, had to go church. and do confirmation. Yeah. So mm -hmm. the bishop, the priest said that the bishop, and then we started doing communion service on Saturday. Okay. And we have us, and we have a little 
people on a, a, a group a good people. size of people come on, on Saturday. On Saturdays, uh-huh. and then and we I started doing this communion service every Saturday, and some of the people asked me, say, can you show me what to do? And then we, we so, so in as Holy Dima, like this week, we will do communion service Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, mm-hmm. right? So we always have no. We have the deacon now. If he the deacon there, then he he has he pre- the deacon does uh, it. Uh, but if, if, sometimes if, if, if the deacon is not, not there, there, right? The, uh-huh. And mm-hmm. so sometimes we end up to do four times of the week. Okay. Mm-hmm. And this priest that just came, the other day one of them got sick, and I had to do communion service Wednesday morning and Where's evening. Where is it at Saint Ignatius? Saint Ignatius. And I have done a Sunday. So you'd have to because we don't that. do Sundays. No, yes. But he got to sick. Get... He got sick. His voice went. Yes, Father and he says, Salvin, uh-huh. No, Father, Father Lorenzo. Oh, Lorenzo. And he okay. called me. I said, "Can you help me?" He said, "I have to do these services. I don't want to cancel. I have a little." I said, "So I went and did come here." So, so actually, being an extraordinary of the Eucharist, you grow in your faith. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, so. Where do you want me to go from here? Yeah. Okay, what what uh, something that you that you mentioned, and I'd like to stop here because I always ask you: yeah. Is there a Bible verse that that yeah. uh, that that caught, caught I, you? I, and I I just want to say here because you always said uh, you were searching searching for the truth, truth and you yeah. wanted to find the out truth, the yeah. truth. And that Bible verse was um, John 14, 14 uh-huh. John 14. And and viewers, I'll read that out to you, just part of it. it says, "I am the way and the truth and the life." No one comes to the Father but through me. If you really knew me, you would know my Father also. Mm-hmm. So that was a Bible verse that you, you have latched on to that because you're always in search of truth. Like you said, to be that catechist uh-huh. that you wanted to be, you needed to know uh-huh. truth mm-hmm. to be able to pass it on. So that's a beautiful Bible verse. Yeah, but actually it comes from the, from the Catechism, you know. Because it's, the Word of God is not a book. The Word of God is a person. It's Jesus. a truth, right? Exactly. And the truth is a person. Mm-hmm. You see, we look for truth in a word. It's not a word. Uh-huh. He is the word and he is the truth. So that, that, that Bible, and what happens with that Bible verse, because I teach confirmation, that Bible verse leads us directly says, to the Holy Spirit. I will send you an advocate. Uh-huh. Because that's another... That's an, uh, the unknown person in the Blessed Trinity that we don't follow is the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. And this is his time that Jesus went and sent him. So we need him, need, right? Especially, and that's when we receive him at confirmation. Exa- exactly, but then some people don't, don't understand, understand confirmation. What that's all about, yes. You see? But that comes with fruits and gifts. Not only that, These confirmation the, is your faith mm-hmm. in totality. Mm-hmm. When you learn your confirmation, you don't learn only the twelve, the seven gifts and the 12 fruits. fruits That's uh-huh. what's going to do it here. Mm-hmm. In confirmation, you get the whole truth. You get the creeds, the couple and spiritual works of mercy, the 10 commandments, the seven deadly sins, the seven uh, gifts, and you get the virtues, the, um, the, 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 the uh, well, theological virtues and the human virtues. virtues. All these things have to be taught. This yeah. all comes together, so, and all of it is found in here. Yes, if, if, but you do. It? What happens is, I read from a bishop from Venezuela, mm-hmm. and he says, and this was written a long time ago, and I found this little book, and he says, one of the mistakes we make when we teach religion, right? We don't realize that religion is not a one-moment thing. Exactly. It's, you don't receive it and it's over. It's finished. It's the yeah. beginning. Every sacrament is a beginning. You have to continue. Because, For the rest of our lives. Yeah, faith is continuous. Faith, faith, faith is not you go to Mass on Sunday and then you leave that's Jesus in, 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 in the pews. And that's what we do as Catholics. I'm sorry, but that's the way I see in it. In fact, you said earlier, I, I didn't mention it, you had, you had said like for, for Sunday Mass was, you're doing Jesus a favor. Exactly, you're, you're doing, doing God a favor. That's, most people that's do how, that. That's how we see it. Huh? Uh-huh, my, duty. Being, uh-huh, my, my duty. My, my duty. For uh-huh, because that's the way we were taught. Yeah, if you don't go to okay. Sunday Mass, you're, 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 you're going to hell and mm-hmm. you're going to commit a mortal sin. It. But today we know here about mortal sin and we know here about, about hell. We know here about okay. hell because mm-hmm. somehow I think the, the devil is here. Oh yeah, see, he knows how to get rid of those words. Exactly. Quick time, huh? mm-hmm. All right. So that that uh, so you certainly learned that that mm-hmm. you, the beauty of the mass now, yeah, yeah. what the mass is, exactly. and it's definitely not duty, and it's definitely no. not doing God a uh-huh. favor. Huh? Uh-huh. So we, we're coming up with, you know, more slowly towards the end. So tell me all the things you are doing today in your life. Well, uh, three years ago, I took some lessons from, and uh, we did twelve books, and these twelve books are required 
for most Catholics to do. Mm-hmm. If you have, I, I think you should find the time. And what happened is that it starts with Vatican II, mm-hmm. when the church was given back to the lay people. You see, this is a lot of person that say, in the old church, we were spectators. Now we are participators. And by our baptism, we are partakers in divine, participators in divine nature, because we are priest, prophet, and king. Right. Each, all of us. All of us by our all baptism, us, by and we are called to be servant leaders. Because Jesus was a servant, he said, I came to serve, not to be served. And each one of us, if you want to follow Jesus, you have to be like Jesus, you have to serve. Mm-hmm. You see, you are not the boss, you are the servant. Mm-hmm. And this is one of the problems we have in our Catholic Church. We are, we are not service-oriented. We are what to call, I did my part and it's I over. Sit, sit back and uh, wait for someone else. And you else. do this, and yes, we are very good at raising funds and doing wonderful things. And I have done my job. Your job never finishes until you die. Until you die. Mm-hmm. Because after you die, then it's too late then because <laughs> you're either going to heaven That's or to it, hell. That's the final breath. Uh-huh, you see? <laughs> and the problem is that the, the Catholic Church is so huge that if you could start to so, 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 when it started, to know, you still would not know you'll everything know. because God know. is what you call Infinite. He's what, way what behind. He's way behind you. Yeah. He's oh, way yeah. behind <laughs> you. Your head, right? Above, you, around, you, below, you, everywhere. You never start. <laughs> you see, you never never stop. We could never. You see. Uh-huh. So I learned that every day, every day, God gave you a life. He gave you a day, and you must deliver that day to God because it's His God. Mm-hmm. But the problem is that we are a little. I think we are too secular. Mm-hmm. We and we tend to look at religion as something that then I, I have a an option to do or not to not do. do right. But uh-huh. you see, we forget one thing. I didn't tell you this. Religion is the virtue of justice. Mm-hmm. Giving to God what is His and giving to man what is His. Uh-huh. If you are not, a, you, you always hear people, I want justice, I want justice. But why? And they have, they have this connotation. No, I am a spiritual person, but I'm not religious. Guess, yes. That's a pile of nonsense. nonsense isn't it? You can what never be mean? spiritual. <laughs> because if you are given a spirit, but that spirit you have to take care of it. That's mm-hmm. your soul. That's a God within exactly. you. Exactly. And it's the religion that will bring you that. To closer. Uh-huh. And closer if you believe that God established a church, right? There's no portion in the Bible that says, Upon this Bible I will build my churches. It says, Upon this church I upon you, Peter, I will build my church. Jesus makes churches no man. Mm-hmm. So if you Want to know? Mm-hmm. Come home. Come back. Come, come home. back home. Come back home. home. <laughs> because home is there. And this, this is, is one of the th- things I think we need. I think all our parishes, and I were going to say this because I'm on the air, we need to go out there and bring back look, the last look, sheep. Look at the viewers. The last sheep. Look at the camera and the television. The last viewers. sheep. He said, today we are taking care of the one and we're letting the 99, 99. out there. Mm-hmm. So it's time for us to go out there to go after and bring the them 99. in. Right. So if you have a, a a brother, a sister, a son, a daughter, a niece that is not going to church. It doesn't cost you anything to tell him, can you go, you want to go to Mars with me? And they will tell you no, but if you keep insisting one of these days, they're going to get tired and they're going with you. And maybe you can give them that experience. We need to go out and get those people. Bring them back home. Okay. Back home. Okay, but then oh, your daily life, you have your daily devotion. Yes, I have. I, and I, I get up usually about three, four in the morning. I say my rosary. Mm-hmm. That's my devotion. I have a very deep devotion to the rosary. I have a devotion to the chaplet of divine mercy. I don't mm-hmm. like to go without it. Then I have the seven dolors of Mary. Mm-hmm. And I have the, what you call, the salutation of Mary. And then I have, uh, what you call, my other little prayers that I say. For example, I quote it, says, let nothing worry you, let nothing trouble we'll, me. We'll, we'll say that at uh-huh. the end. Anyway, mm-hmm. but I have other ones mm-hmm. that I use. For example, I said, I have a, a verse that said that says I just discovered it, it says in a, a new in prayer I found because I was reading about angels. Mm-hmm. So I like to talk about angels a little bit, just for five seconds. Most people don't believe in angels, but the angels are all over the place. The spiritual beings. And, and we don't teach our children about guardian angels. I, I remember we used to, that, but we don't we do anymore. anymore. We don't uh-huh. teach them about mm-hmm. guardian angels. And angels, I have found mm-hmm. that my guardian angel takes care of me every day. Okay. Because I say my guardian angel prayer every day. Okay. Mm-hmm. And one of the amazing things I was doing catechism with a group 
And when I got to the angels, most of them don't believe in the angels. Mm -hmm. But yet they say the 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 the, the Michael Saint Michael the Archangel. Yeah. But I can't understand this. Yeah, How can you say this way and you believe in, in angels? angels. <laughs> you see, one of the things is that your angel takes and my angel has taken care of many times, uh -huh. mm -hmm. many times. So I don't know if you're going to end it there. <laughs> yes. Um, well, what I, what I wanted to uh, just a little note uh -huh. for the viewers. Uh -huh. You always you said that at, when we were talking, you said that all of this happens by the grace of God. That's right. And I was I was doing my um, daily bread, and uh -huh. you said you have one yes, of I these too. Yeah. And again, viewers, this is a good little booklet for for daily devotion. That's right. I, I go. This is like I'm on my fourth, fifth go round yeah. of this one. You, and you, in, you never get. Is, is in, in fact, in fact, it's, in, it's, in, in the beginning, it has a very good quote. Well, well, it, it's, it's divided into three parts. No, but the beginning has something here. Uh -huh. It says, in, in right here, and, and, and this, 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 I use it. Mm -hmm. Right here, right here, you see? It says, it, it tells you about, this is the same one, I guess. Uh -huh. okay. It tells you in the three steps of conversion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so this this will be this. Well, it's the, the table of contents yeah, shows you that. Uh -huh. So basically, it's a three steps. It's uh -huh. a, it's a first step. The first stage is is a, the way of purification. Uh, purification. Okay. So you have to purif purifying yourself first. I, to, I told you the way then, the way my one has it said, and it said how oh, oh, it goes. Let me see if I can remember the thing because I always say it. It said we must reform. Our lives, the period is a reformation, it's a conversion. Conversion. Right? And okay. then you have a conformation. You have to conform what you have reformed, you have to conform it to Christ. Mm -hmm. Then you must transform everything to Christ. Yes. Uh -huh. And it's, it's, a, it's, it's a, actually, everybody goes to a some through, form of conversion. Through some of those stages. Well, we go to it, but mm -hmm. sometimes we, we are, we, because we, we are not paying attention. Okay, so the, the second book is the way of imitation, uh -huh. and the third book is the way of union. Exactly, with union. Christ, the that's union. A, that's the three of Union uh -huh. of Christ. It's beautiful. So in this book, I, I found a lovely definition of grace that's when you right. spoke about this yeah. grace. And it says it three steps for grace. Mm. It says, Grace enlightens your mind to see some truth more clearly and appreciate it more deeply. Mm -hmm. Second, it gives your will an inclination towards the good which you see. And third, it offers you the strength needed to follow the good if you so desire. And I think that's we're talking about your free will. Exactly. And in your case, I, I think you have seen this of grace and you desire to follow it. So when you want grace, grace will come. If you go, you just listen to it. Here it comes. It comes in all different mm -hmm. ways. Huh? Through, through the homilies you hear, yeah. through people. Like you said, you heard that voice in the hospital mm -hmm. that says if you get up and walk. Huh? Yep. So yeah, that was God speaking. Yep. This is the grace that comes. And of course, to build on it is what you're doing through the sacraments, daily mass, and the reading. Yeah. Reading to find out more tr truth of it. Actually, actually, what, what, what you really do every day, because when you go to daily mass, and if you are a lector, you read the three readings every the readings day. So you read day. the Bible every day. You're reading Bible, sure. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And then, but sometimes we read and we don't understand. Mm -hmm. And that's where the grace comes. That's where, the, yes, exactly. that's where the grace okay. helps us. Okay, so we've sort of, we've come to the end of this, but I always have a few takeaways. And I go back to the how I opened the show. When, when, um, Balamar said, we come from a dysfunctional family. And I laughed to myself, we're all dysfunctional. But we ha God has a way of writing straight with crooked lines. And that's what he does, doesn't mm -hmm. he? Yeah? He r uses all of us to write straight with these very, very, very crooked lines. Um, like your mother, she had some sort of a blind faith. Right. She may not have gone to church, but she was practicing it in all her poverty yes, with right. the people she met. Yep. And that's what you have to. From You had a blind faith from the very beginning, mm -hmm. going to Mass, no matter what. Mm -hmm. no, you, even if you weren't doing everything fully, you mm -hmm. were constantly going to Mass. So without you realizing it, you were receiving those graces we're talking yep. about. And then, of course, like I said, this grace... Um, I, I've always mentioned this book to you. I, I bring it up once again, The Dynamic Catholic, The Four Stages of a Dynamic Catholic, which are prayer, study, generosity, 
and evangelization. Exactly. And I see it all in you. You have your prayer time. You don't stop studying. Even though Balamar only com he completed um, elementary, he did. You did three years three of years night school. school. Yep. Okay, but he reads. God worked with him, and God showed him where he mm -hmm. what the books to read, how to, to become a catechist, mm -hmm. how to help a church. So you're studying, and that leads to generosity That's right. and generosity to, to evangelization. So we hear constantly people saying, oh, poor me, huh? I was raised without a father. There's a statistic that says 85, this is American statistic, 85% of youth in prisons are fatherless. Well, Baltimore could have said the same thing, poor me, I never had a father. He didn't let that keep him back. He got down, he did what he had to do. He became street smart yep. to, to, to get there. And so please, for anyone looking at this show that have had similar experiences to Valdemar, see where you can go to start getting, turn, turn to a faith, turn to a God, turn to someone, this, this God of ours, uh, who can lead us in that right direction, in that, right, that path. Well, we've come to the end of the show. And viewers, we'd like to thank you for being with, with us today. Um, we end always with a prayer, and I'm going to use a little prayer that, uh, that once and again, Valdemar taught me mm -hmm. and was taken from St. Mother Therese, mm -hmm. St. Therese of Avila, St. Therese of Avila. So we'll say it okay. together. Let, let nothing, nothing worry, worry me. me. Let, let nothing trouble, trouble me. Everything, everything passes. God never changes. Patience, Patience obtains, obtains all. all. God, God alone is enough. enough. So please let's understand that. God alone is enough. So I'll leave you on that note and hoping with that, that letting, letting God meet you where you're at and helping you to lead, let him lead you back home to our Catholic faith. Thank you for being here with us. Once again, I'd like to thank, thank our cameraman. Mark's here with us, Louis. Thank you, Alamar, for being here with us and for sharing your sure. faith with us. Goodbye now.